Hey again, this is Ash from Outlier. This is the third video in our series of videos on how characters actually work. Last time we talked about form components and meaning components. Quick review. Form components are components that give their form, that is, what they were originally a picture of, to add to a character's meaning, while meaning components give the component meaning to add to the character's meaning. Now, today we're going to talk about empty components, and in a future video, we'll talk about sound components. Now, before we get into empty components, we have to talk about another concept, and that concept's called an empty form. Now, with the previously mentioned form components, a component gives its full form to a character. But what does that mean? Well, a full form is, it was originally a picture of something, it represents a spoken word, so it has a sound and a meaning. But an empty form is just the form. It has no sound, it has no meaning, and it's not representing what the component originally represented. And once again, note here, when we say the word picture, we're using the term rather loosely. Actually, what we're talking about are written symbols that are used to write down spoken words. The concept of full form is in juxtaposition to the concept empty form. So what is an empty component? Well, when a component gives its empty form to a character, that's not related to the sound and meaning the word it represents, and it's not related to the original picture of what the component was, we call this an empty component. Now that might sound a little bit strange or confusing, but let's have a look at a couple of examples and we'll clear things up. The first example I'd like to go over is chu, which means to go out. And looking at the modern script, it looks like two mountains, one on top of the other. But actually, this form has nothing to do with mountains. Originally, it was a picture of a foot walking out of a cave, and that represented the meaning to go out. And through the process of stylization, uh, to the point that it was actually corrupted to look like mountains, we have mountain over mountain. So we call this mountain an empty form, and we call it that because A, it has nothing to do with the original picture, B, it has nothing to do with the sound shan, and C, it has nothing to do with the meaning mountain. Okay, so one reason that empty components exist is through character corruption. Another reason empty components exist is due to one of the methods that were used to create new characters. And this method entailed taking a character that already existed, putting another part onto that character in order to distinguish the old character from the new. So an example of this would be the character Gao, meaning tall. Gao was created by taking the character Jing, which means now means capital city, adding a ko to this character to create Gao. So the character Jing, since it already acquired the meanings tall, tall hill, tall building, and capital city, it was just too much for one character to handle, so they created another character to represent the meaning tall. So they took, so they took the original character Jing, added a ko to it, in order to give it a distinguishing mark to separate the two, and then that character was Gao, and that character was used to represent the meaning tall. Now in this case, the Ko does not mean mouth, it's not a picture of an entrance to the building, it's simply a mark to distinguish these two characters, okay? And in Mandarin, this type of mark is called a Fan Hua Fu Hao. So the components in the character Jin and in the character Gao are all what we call empty components. Why are they empty components? Well, what are they made of? Well, we both characters have a toe, meaning lid, but actually that's not really toe, it just looks like it. it's just the top of the building. So it's an empty component, it's not related to the sound toe, it's not related to the meaning lid. Then the ko, right in the lid, is actually also, uh, doesn't relate to mouth, it's not an opening, and doesn't have the sound ko. It's just a simple form used in order to basically draw a building. So both of these, actually, the character Jean, you can't divide it into smaller parts. It's actually a, a single whole where each component is an empty component. They all work together to create this image of a tall building. Now the character Gao, you can actually, you can actually divide up into Ko plus Jean, though that's hard to see from the modern form. But if you're trying to figure out why this form looks the way it does, you can't go assigning meanings to To, Ko, and Jiong doesn't work that way. Simply a picture of a tall building. So these are called empty components. So in order to learn characters effectively, you have to know which components are giving a sound and which are giving a meaning. But it's also important to know which components are not giving a sound and a meaning. They're just giving a form and that's it. 
So these empty components are actually quite common, probably more common than you might imagine. Take for instance, Lee to stand. Here's a list of characters for which the Lee in these characters is actually just an empty component. In other words, not related to the original picture of Lee, which is somebody standing on the ground, not related to the sound Lee, and not related to the meaning stand. It's just an empty component. So here's the list. Bu, Ying, Zhang, Long, Tong, Jing, Jing, Xin, Xin, Qin. Now, to review, empty components are components that just give an empty form to a character. In other words, a form not related to the original sound or meaning of that component and not related to what that component was originally a picture of. Empty components exist for basically two reasons. One, because of character corruption, and two, because of an ancient way of creating new characters via putting an extra component onto an existing character. If you like this video, be sure to click subscribe. You can follow us on Twitter and on Facebook, and if you're really into the origins and development of Chinese characters, be sure to check out our blog. Until next time, this is Ash from Outlier.